Guys, how's it going? This video is gonna break down Wix websites and compare it with a custom website solution. Which is gonna be the best for a certain sort of business? Honestly, it depends. For some businesses, it's really gonna make sense to go ahead with Wix. For other businesses, that is not gonna be a good decision to make. They're gonna lose a lot of potential income and a lot of potential revenue or clients or whatever sort of result they're trying to get from a website. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down, show you why I think that way, and just give you some examples of businesses that really benefit with Wix or other businesses that should really go ahead and build a proper website using a proper website designer. So for a business owner, this could be a really tricky choice to make. They wanna invest the right amount of money, but at the same time, they wanna get the biggest possible return on that money that they spent. Uh, when they look at Wix, they're seeing something that's very affordable, it's very cheap, and they're trying to compare this with more expensive web design, and maybe they're struggling to see what the return on investment with that is. I'm gonna break it down across three different categories. I'm gonna break it down on the initial price, the overall cost of the project, including the time invested, the money invested, and then the end result, that you know final product, when it's online, what should you expect to see when it's up there from potential clients, from you know your potential income coming from the website, all those uh, things that come as a result of having the website online. All right, so the first category I'm gonna focus on is price. Just the straight up price of the project from the beginning, how much it's gonna cost. So I'm here on the Wix website, gonna go to pricing. This might change over time. It's early 2018 right now. Depending on your region or depending when you're watching on this video, maybe these prices are slightly different. But we're seeing here for this e-commerce solution, uh, it's pretty much $100 a year and you get all these different things. I'll let you go visit the Wix website yourself, see whatever package uh, most stands out to you. But basically you're talking about $100 a year to get a website online. So on price alone, Wix is gonna win this one. No website designer out there who's reputable is gonna come anywhere close to $100. So if you're a startup business or if you're just a low revenue business, you wanna get something simple online, something that you can do yourself maybe in the evenings or at work, Wix is probably your best choice. If that's all you care about is just getting a website up there for you know the cheapest price or the most affordable price possible, I would, even as a web designer, I would go ahead and recommend Wix. The next category though is gonna be cost. So this is definitely different to price and it's gonna take a little bit more time, not too much, but to break it down correctly. And you gotta think of this when it comes to a business, especially if you're a business owner watching this, you really gotta consider not just the price, but what's the cost of these two different solutions. All right, so next up is cost. Weight cost, you have to look at not what the price is at the beginning, but what the project is actually costing you. And it could be potentially negatively costing you business uh, in terms of clients, in terms of revenue, in terms of projects. So I'm gonna look at two potential businesses and see what is the right choice for them when it comes to choosing a website solution. This first business is a flower shop. And let's say they sell $800 worth of flowers a week. That's roughly 40,000 a year. The thing you gotta next look at is where is a flower shop getting its business from? How much of it is coming offline? How much of it is coming from online? So I'm not in the flower shop industry, but I would imagine for a flower shop, for a business like this, a lot of their clients, a lot of their sales are coming from where they're physically located. Maybe they're on a busy street, maybe they're on a popular street corner, People are walking past, seeing the flowers, and you know, dropping in, making a purchase. That's pretty normal, I would imagine, for a flower shop. The other main revenue for them to make sales, I would presume, is from past happy clients or from referrals. So maybe somebody went there before, they really liked the flowers, they had a good experience, and they dropped back again. Or somebody went there, and then they told a family member, they told a friend, and then that person pops in at another later stage and also makes a purchase. So let's just say 20% of their customers come from having a website. So we would say over a year at 40,000, potentially $8,000 of that is coming from the website. That's a 20% uh, of their revenue. So let me just type this in, a 20% of sales. And then let's say an amazing website, a much better website is gonna increase sales, let's just say by 25%. So to save me typing again, I've already done the maths. At 25% of 8,000, you're talking potentially 2,000 more revenue. So if these people in this fictional example, if they got 20% of their yearly revenue from their website, which would equal $8,000, 
if they improve the websites that got 25% more sales, they're talking a potential of 2,000 extra dollars per year. So why this is important is when it comes to, you know, choosing what the best solution for them is, if they go out and hire a web designer for $2,000, it's basically going to take them one year of making 25% better sales from their website to even pay that off. So a much better solution for this business is probably just to do it themselves. Use some sort of website builder like Wix. Uh, don't invest that much money because it would take a lot of time and a lot of potential sales to just even make back the initial money that they spent. But that is just an example of a smaller business. I'm going to show you where getting a custom website design really does make sense. So let's look at business number two, which is a construction business. Let's say they're you know, a pretty decent business. They sell two projects a month at 30,000. That's roughly 720,000 a year. And let's say if we build them a great website, a uh, very custom solution, we got you know, a great portfolio on there. We got great past results that they have. We show all their qualifications, all their technical abilities, all the different services. And by doing this, building a great website, getting it to list better online, you know, true SEO, showing up higher in Google searches, uh, we get a 20% increase in sales. Over a year, that's going to equal $144,000 extra year for this business. Again, though, we have this question, how much of this came from the website and is that figure realistic? So here's the difference between the two different businesses. With a flower shop, they're mostly dependent upon their physical location and past clients, people who recommend them as a business. With a construction company, though, people are not likely to physically see a business. They're going to go looking online. They're going to do Google searches. You know, best construction business in my area or construction company in whatever town. This is primarily a way that people would search out a business like a construction business. They're still going to have uh, people who refer them. They're still going to have some people who see the physical location depending on where they're based. But a lot of sales for a business like this are going to come from people searching online. And I have past experience in construction. This is definitely the case where I would say at least 50% of your new clients uh, of new business every year is coming through people searching for that business online, coming across the website, and then making a decision to go ahead and purchase um, the services or the product. So with a business like this that has these higher price projects, these higher price sales, even though they're doing much less uh, quantity of sales, each one is worth that much more. You have this large yearly um, you know, revenue for this business. A 20% increase in sales is going to be a huge result. Let's just even say it was a 5% increase in sales. You're still going to have this figure of about you know, roughly, I think, 32,000 there. Uh, that's going to be a really decent figure. And they could go ahead and invest in a website. Let's say it was $8,000, an amazing website, great photos, uh, great text that explained everything about this business, a really good layout and a good sales system. That website should be paid back within a few weeks, a few months. And then for the next few years, it's just going to be straight profit from investing in that. So when it comes at the cost of a project, you really have to look at these things, not just the initial price, but over a few months, over a few years, what are you potentially losing by not getting the right solution? All right, so just switched on the lights. The sun was starting to go down here pretty fast. Another thing with cost is this. It's not just the money. It's the time and effort that it takes a business owner to make a great site for their business. A thing about Wix that is often overlooked is this. When you look at a template like this one here, it's very, very visually based. It's a lot of amazing looking images or perhaps an amazing looking video that really is what makes the site the way it is. When you go ahead and purchase something like this though, that's not gonna be there. You're gonna have to change this out with your own images, with your own videos. If you're a typical business owner, that's not really something you have. You don't just have a bunch of you know, professional images lying around and a professionally made uh, video promoting your services. So that's going to be very hard for you to create a similar quality example as what you're purchasing. You know, Wix uses this a lot. They're selling, of course, you know, the best they can, their own services. But when they show you sites like this with these amazing images, let me just click on the portfolio page as an example. You know, this is all image based. You're looking at this and you're thinking, oh, this, you know, if I had this for my business, this would be amazing. But you know, you're looking at these images, what they're selling you is not these images, they're selling you this layout. You're going to have to go ahead and put your own images in here. 
And if you're not a professional photographer, if you don't want to hire a professional photographer, it's going to be very difficult to build something to the same quality of a website like this. One thing I will say is when you go and hire a professional website designer, they really know how to do this to the best of their abilities. When you hire a, you know, a proper professional, they're going to have a great website that converts you know, the casual person looking at this website into a potential sale. That's the whole purpose of a website is to take you know, general interest and convert that into some sort of action that you want for your, you know, that a business owner wants for that business. That can be done visually through using great photos, great videos, or it can be done um, using great text, great copywriting is what it's called. Uh, basically, true um, writing, kind of hitting on all the different things that might convince someone to go ahead and take action and to use this product or to use this service. With Wix, they're relying upon a lot of visual elements. And if you don't have those visual things to add in, like great images and great videos, you're really struggling because there's not a lot of space here for text. And even if there is space for text, that's something that you're going to have to write yourself. So this is when we start to see a huge separation of who Wix is suitable for and who it isn't suitable for. If you're a business that can afford to invest the money up front to hire a proper web designer, even maybe also a professional photographer or videographer, uh, have those great media elements like great images and great videos, but even just with a normal website designer, professional website designer, just having a great layout, having great text in there, having simple but effective images in the right place that hit on the right sort of points that you're trying to make, that's really gonna see a huge return on investment if it makes sense to make that initial investment. There's no way that a website, you know, no offense to Wix, but there's no way that a website built by somebody who's not a website designer is going to compete against somebody who's a you know, professional website designer for years who really understands sales psychology, sales systems, sales funnels, and uh, things like SEO ranking, getting a site to list well on Google and to just work effectively when somebody visits it. You know, Wix does have customer support, but at the end of the day, they're not going to create that website for you. They're only going to troubleshoot certain issues. All right, so my last category is results. What you got to look at, the most important thing when you look at a website is not the cost, but what's the end result. I'm sure you would be happy to pay any price if within one week you had made back more money than what you spent. So the most important thing for making sense of the price you paid is the results that you get at the end of the day. I want to compare two different sites. This is a fitness template on Wix, which again, this is going to cost you like roughly $100 a year. And this is another website for a guy called Joe Wix, no relation to Wix, <laughs> uh, who's the body coach. If you live in the UK, you might know of this guy. He's a very popular uh, fitness guy all over Instagram and stuff. But this is his website. He runs literally a business that, you know, roughly, I think, uh, from my knowledge, makes over 20 million a year. This is his website, very, very simple. It would seem on the surface, uh, very, very easy to lay out. This might seem to you know, somebody not familiar with web design, something that they themselves could create using something like Wix. So let's break down the different results. Let's look at this Wix one first. So a thing, again, what I just covered in that last section was with a template like this, it now looks great. You're looking at this on the Wix website, you're looking at these images and you're thinking, wow, this would be perfect for my business. The thing is, though, you, you know, might have this very cheap initial cost of paying Wix for a template like this, but you got to go ahead and either use these very generic photos or you got to go out and pay someone or do it yourself. Take photos for your own business. Also, you're going to have to write up all this text and uh, hope that you write it in such a way as to get sales, as to hit on the right sort of things uh, to promote someone to take some action to sign up for your services or your product. The thing with a website like this, obviously Joe Wicks did not design his own website. He paid someone to do this. While this website looks simple on the surface, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So straight away, you got this great intro paragraph. You have these uh, different you know, indicators that this guy is well known, that he's trusted, that he's an authority in his space. Uh, you have this section here. We're getting into different things included in this plan. I'm not going to go into huge detail with his site, but all these different things are hitting upon different sales psychology uh, tactics or approaches. They're converting somebody, you know, a very high percentage of people who visit this website into a paying customer. That's what matters here. That's what's making this guy millions upon millions a year. 
is his website is designed by somebody who knows how to sell, who knows how to turn cold traffic as the expression, uh, but turn people visiting this website who might or might not buy and turn those people into somebody who did buy. That's going to be the huge difference for any business is the results that you get from a website. So when you look as a business owner, when you look at a website and you think, oh, this looks like something you might be able to build yourself, that's really not a fair representation of how talented some web designers are insofar as how much results they can get for your business. While you might be able to build something like this, that's like looking at a painting in a famous art museum that's worth millions and thinking, you know, I might be able to copy that exact design for myself. Maybe, but you're not really understanding the underlying principles of um, what's actually being done there. And it's unlikely that it's going to get, you know, similar results. That's not an exact uh, accurate reflection upon art. So <laughs> it's just the analogy I came up with. But um, maybe another analogy would be like a doctor. I mean, you could Google something online and get Google to tell you what is wrong and just trust that that's the right thing. Or you could go to a professional expert and really get a proper opinion and get it treated correctly as fast as possible and make a full recovery in the shortest amount of time possible. Same with web design. People exist out there. They really know what they're doing. They know how to get people to go ahead and use your service, use your product. If you're doing it yourself, if you're setting it up yourself, one, it's taking focus away from your own business, the thing that you really should be focused upon. And two, if you do go ahead and do it, you really have to rely upon yourself to be able to do all these things and then compete against other businesses who might have hired an expert. So I will leave it at that. I do think that Wix is still the right choice for certain businesses, smaller businesses who don't want to spend that much money and probably won't see that much return from a website. But I do think if a business is going to potentially have a lot of revenue either coming from a great website or lost because they didn't invest in a good website, then they really should go ahead, hire an expert and get it done correctly. If you made it to the end of this video, I trust you either know a lot about web design or you care a lot about web design, either for yourself or for your own business. Please leave me a comment below. Let me know what has your experience with Wix been, either as a business owner or as a designer, or if you prefer a custom website solution. If you're a designer, why do you think that's the right choice? If you're a business owner, how are you making that decision? What is it based upon? I'd love to see your advice, your comments. It's going to help out other people. It's going to uh, help out myself as well to know what people are really thinking out there and what they see as being the best choice for themselves. Hit like if you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you're into web design and you want to see similar content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.